Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh 67062 electronic repair kit. This thing is uh, normally 5 bucks on the shelf, and with a 20% off coupon, it's 4 bucks. so I kind of impulse bought it. Although this uses a little 4mm or 5.32nd hex drive, um, it had a few unique bits. So it's kind of funny because it's advertised as an electronic repair kit, like you might use for tablets and cell phones and things like that. Uh, however, it's missing things, plastic things like spatulas to, you know, pry off covers. Although it does have a little pry bar, you also need, like, you know, the shims. And it doesn't have the pentalobe or the five-point star socket. It does have the little uh, six-point, the little Torx, but not the pentalobes that many Apple products use. So I thought it, it, a couple of glaring deficiencies, even if it is uh, five bucks or less. One thing I will say is actually this seems to have pretty reasonable quality, especially for what they're charging. Um, we'll take a closer look. Here's a quick list of all the bits it comes with. It's pretty easy for it to, uh, or for you to read it rather than me uh, spew it off. And it does have a lifetime warranty. We can see it right there. It is a microscopic little lifetime warranty logo. So if you bend or strip them, I guess they're going to replace them. Although these bits are a little bit stronger than it seems. There's some really cheap versions of these uh, little kits out there. And the bits, you know, you'll actually just twist them. They're just made out of super soft steel. And these actually seem to be pretty decent. So the uh, real reason I got these kits is uh, for four kind of unique bits. It has all, you know, the standard, you know, a couple or three different sizes of uh, tiny Phillips and uh, T3 and T5. So if you like like taking apart old hard drives to get the magnets out of them, uh, these are the tiny size star bits or torques that you really need. But let me pull out the, the bits that I thought were unique and kind of why I, I bought this kit. One of them is a tiny little tri-wing. I will have to say that this little plastic tray, the, the outer case seems uh, fine, but this little plastic tray is just you know, wafer thin and the bits kind of want to poke through and the pockets are a little bit too deep so it's kind of hard to get the bits out as we'll see here as I try to bungle my way. Usually you have to find and get, I mean it's almost, in, it's surprisingly difficult to get the bits out of this little thing so I'm probably going to drill a hole uh, or take a piece of wood and drill a bunch of holes and just push the bits in there. Let's pull it out. It came with a few uh, pretty interesting style bits. I'll have to say the the little two-point star and little slot heads, those are all pretty standard. But as far as what I thought was pretty nice is this little tri-wing. I've seen some electronics that use this little guy here. It's like a three-point Phillips, the easiest way of saying it. This camera would cooperate. It came with like a little reset pin or, you know, a SIM card ejection pin, which I thought was neat. It also had a, tamper, a tapered point. I'm not quite sure what this might be used for. But I thought it was interesting. And then it had this little spatula or a little pry bar. And I thought, well, that's pretty handy. And if it has a lifetime warranty, you probably would end up breaking this pry bar pretty often trying to pry open little electronics. And if they're going to replace it, then they're going to replace it. So that was kind of the excuse. And you can see that the quality of the bits is actually pretty decent. They do stamp the, the standard bits like the, they call it a Y0 for the, uh, tri-wing they don't stamp these like the little spatula and these other ones just because you know they're real unique but i thought that's going to come real in handy especially that little ejection tool and reset tool many devices have little reset buttons they're always trying to find a paper clip or a hairpin or something to press the little button that's inside the tiny little hole like on a router or something as far as the handle the handle actually seems to be decent they actually have a larger set of these little 532nd inch bits but the handle that comes with it actually seems kind of cheesy, at least, you know, sitting on there on the shelf. I like this handle because it's, it has interesting ergonomics, and I like it. It uses a little nub texturing on the back. These nubs work well, but if you really use these drivers or let them beat around in the toolbox, the nubs always end up getting ground off. But it still leaves a texture to grip. A uh, pretty decent quality uh, over molding which is a more expensive process. I mean, you have to mold this and then you have to put this in another die to mold the, the soft grip over it. And then the front, so that's an oval shape, maybe a little bit triangular, but it, it's more of an oval shape, but where the front is trilobular or triangular. And it has these nice little uh, finger rests with little 
uh, vertical lines, little kind of serrations or jimping to get a grip on, and I like that a lot. And then in the very front of it's also knurled, so you can hold it in your hand and get a pretty decent grip. And if we look, maybe I got lucky on this one, but surprisingly enough, the knurling is pretty aggressive. It comes up the little pyramids. That's what you want to see on knurling. Sometimes there is a debate. Maybe you knurl just a little bit less, so there's like, they look like calderas. They're like little volcanoes with the crater versus the just a pyramid shape. But the, it is pretty aggressive on this, and I do like it. So they advertise as being magnetic, and it does have a little rare earth magnet in the chuck here, which holds the bits, but they're relying on that magnetism being transmitted through the bit. And it will hold a screw, but it's not particularly strong. Here, let me show you. Here, I'll even put this little spatula tip in because it has a little bit more mass to it and transmits the magnetism a little better. But here's a little collection of standardized, you know, little screws you might use. And it will you know, hold a screw onto the end of the tip. But as far as being a, what would I would consider being a strong magnet, this is pretty weak. Uh, I would think that they, you would want to if, uh, take each of these little bits and actually run a magnet on them to magnetize the bits in addition to this because uh, even though it will technically hold the screw, if you bump your hand or anything, it'll probably go flying off. Anyway, I just wanted to do a review of this little cat. It's been catching my eye for a while and kind of wondered if it would really, you know, if it was really worth it. And for four bucks, it's kind of, you know, one of those things you buy just to get a couple bits. And that's what I did. Otherwise, I'd probably get their other set just because it has a wider variety. And it's probably going to do you better. And I think it's just a little confusing that they have this on the shelf. Maybe just so they can hit that $5 price point and just include the most commonly used bits rather than the more expensive, whatever it is, $10 one that they have. Anyway, I'm going to end this review here. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Excuse me. Sorry about that pause there. I'm also, you know, learning a little bit more uh, how to use the video editing software. So if my intros and stuff change, it's just me kind of learning. But this kind of explains why the last video seemed different. And I, my little subscriber logo that's up here uh, was animated. So I'm, you know, kind of experimenting. Just in case you're wondering what was going on. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing once again. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.